Around 1942, the course of World War II began to change. Although at the beginning the Germans took the lead, from that year on it was their enemies who began to accumulate victories. Seeing that his plans were sinking, Adolf Hitler became obsessed with various military projects that could alter the course of the war. The Führer ordered Third Reich scientists to create devastating weaponry so powerful that it could annihilate the Allies without the Nazis suffering battlefield casualties. Huge sums of money were destined to develop the miracle weapons, as the Ministry of Propaganda dubbed them, some of which were as ambitious as they were impossible, and even gave rise to legends and rumors that were never fully confirmed. From cannons that launched whirlwinds to tanks of monstrous dimensions, the German industry designed numerous prototypes that, even today, stand out for their rarity. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we'll tell you all about Adolf Hitler's most outlandish miracle weapons. Are you ready? Let's start! Although the Nazis designed countless inventions for warfare, the most curious are what some researchers called clean weapons, so-called, because their operation would have depended on energy from the environment. The first of this kind was the wind cannon, an artillery piece capable of launching streams of compressed air. According to the plans, it used a lethal mixture of hydrogen and oxygen that, when combined, caused the detonation. The final effect was similar to that of a grenade, engulfing its target in an explosion of water vapor and air. Scientists tested this peculiar cannon at a distance of more than 180 meters, managing to destroy wooden plates 2.5 centimeters thick. However, it was never tested on the battlefield, although a prototype was said to have been installed on the Elba River to protect a bridge in the event of an Allied invasion. In any case, the Nazi experiments in artillery would have gone further. Dr. Richard Wallacecheck, a Third Reich scientist, is believed to have devised the sonic cannon, a weapon intended to support the German army. It was composed of a pair of parabolic reflectors joined through tubes that formed a firing chamber. Inside, a mixture of methane and oxygen was placed that produced cyclical detonations. The bursts generated a devastating shock wave, which ended up creating a sonic beam that was launched towards the target. The attack could reach a distance of up to 250 meters, within which its high-pitched tone produced excruciating pain capable of shattering the eardrums of those in its path. In the range of 50 meters, the sonic beam of a thousand pascals caused death. As revolutionary as this technology would have been, its sheer size, at over 3 meters tall, was deemed impractical to deploy on the battlefield, so it was never used. German scientists, it is said, also devised an anti-aircraft artillery piece, the purpose of which was to shoot down enemy planes through whirlwinds. This is the Vortex Cannon, designed by Austrian researchers, consisting of a mortar that sank into the ground and was aimed at the sky. It fired projectiles of pulverized coal combined with delayed action explosive material. According to the plans of its creators, the mixture of the weapon was to cause a tornado on a scale, powerful enough to destroy the wings of Allied airplanes. Both the Vortex Cannon, as well as the Sonic and Wind Cannons shared the same drawback. Their power was not enough to cause great damage. This may have been the fundamental reason why the weapons never got beyond an experimental development phase. But before continuing we want to invite you to discover our new channel, Military Might. Here we will carry out in-depth analyzes of the most powerful, modern and surprising weapons of war in the world. So, if you like military weaponry, you must check out Military Might. Let's go on with our video. One of the most curious miracle weapons of Nazism was the endothermic bomb. The most famous tactic of the Third Reich was the Blitzkrieg, which consisted of lightning attacks that allowed for a quick victory with few casualties. In these campaigns, the role of German aviation was fundamental, which had to devastate the main enemy objectives through bombardments, forcing them to surrender. 
With the aim of increasing the damage of the Luftwaffe's attacks, there are those who maintain that Nazi scientists devised endothermic explosives, thrown from their aircraft in such a way that, when detonated, an icy zone would be created that would freeze everything that was present in it. The Radius of a Kilometer Human beings, animals and buildings would be covered by a layer of ice that would practically turn them into statues. The low temperatures would be responsible for rendering the weapons useless and killing all living beings affected. However, the endothermic bomb never became more than an extravagant design, and Nazi scientists never succeeded in creating a suitable chemical mixture to produce the desired effect. Hitler's inordinate ambition also extended to aeronautics. By 1944, Germany sought a way to repel repeated Allied bombing raids on its territory. For this, the Führer commissioned the Focke Wolf Company to develop an airplane that would serve as a means of defense. The result was the Triebflügel, which means wing-powered fighter. It was an interceptor plane, whose task was to shoot down enemy planes before they could carry out their attacks on industrial areas crucial to the German economy. The design of the Triebflügel stood out for its rarity since, despite its name, it did not have wings. The thrust and lift force was powered by a propeller in the center of the plane, just between the tail and the cockpit. The angle of the three rotor blades could be adjusted to change speed and climb. On the other hand, it was armed with two 30mm negative 103 Malawian Quachas cannons and two 20mm MG-151 cannons. Development of the Triebflügel was never completed, as the Allies seized the facility where it was being manufactured. However, Hitler's biggest obsession involved a colossal main battle tank, the Landkreuzer P-1000, nicknamed RAT. According to the plans of the Nazi scientists, this vehicle would be the largest tank in the world, a mobile fortress with capabilities of destruction never seen before. Its dimensions were surprising, it was 11 meters high, 14 meters wide and 35 meters long, while its weight was around a thousand tons. It was as tall as a three-story building, and its steel armor could withstand the most powerful artillery attacks, as it was 36 centimeters thick at the front and 22 at the sides. As for its armament, it had two anti-tank mouse turrets, two smaller guns to deal with the infantry, eight anti-aircraft guns and two naval guns to destroy long-distance targets. The RAT was such a complex weapon that, to function properly, it had to be manned by more than 40 men to cover all of the vehicle's combat positions. Despite Hitler's enthusiasm for the monstrous tank, it was none other than German armaments minister Albert Speer who cancelled its development. The official argued that the RAT was an unfeasible project, plagued with technical flaws that made it an obsolete weapon. Its main disadvantage was its enormous size, first of all because the Third Reich did not have facilities large enough to assemble a tank of that size. Second, moving it across the battlefield would have been a cumbersome task, and its slow travel speed would have made it easy prey for Allied bombers. In the end, Hitler's miracle weapons were, for the most part, fantasies impossible to achieve. In any case, the Third Reich spent enormous sums of money on its development, and wasted its financial resources on unrealizable projects, thus contributing to its defeat. And now, we want to ask you, what do you think is the most curious weapon of all? Leave us your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.